In this video, I show you how to combine both front and back lighting in splash photos. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. In this video, I'm going to show you my basic backlit splash photography technique. Now, because it's backlit, if you want to see what you're splashing, you're going to need to do some front lit photography as well. And I'll show you how to balance the two with a great little trick. OK, let's go through my setup. As this is a splash photo, I need something to splash into. So I've got this nice round fish bowl. It's made of Perspex plastic, so it's not gonna crack if I accidentally get my splash wrong. It's sitting on a glossy black tile. So that's great. And around it is some trays to try and capture some of the water. But perhaps the most essential thing is one of these. It's a towel. This is likely to get wet and messy. You need to be able to mop up any spills and uh, having a towel around is a really good idea. So that's the, the basic setup here, but I'm gonna back illuminate this. So let's add a light in the back. So I'm gonna be using flash to freeze the water and I've got my Adorama Streetlight 360. It's a very powerful flash, way more power than I would normally need for, for this sort of close distance. But the reason I'm using a powerful flash is I, it means I can turn the flash power right down low. And the lower you get the flash power, the shorter the flash duration, meaning the more it will stop the water in midair. And that's a really good thing. I could do this with a speed light, but rather than working with a low ISO and a small aperture, I'd end up using a big ISO and a big wide open aperture with less depth of field. It's all about balance. If you've got access to one of these, this is a great tool for the job. I'm going to be using a paper background. This is tracing paper. It's about a metre wide. Uh, dressmakers use it for tracing out patterns, that kind of thing. And it's great because it's disposable when it gets wet and it will get wet, but it's also semi-translucent. And that means that I will be able to get the light coming through and give me the backlit illumination I'm after. So I'm just using ordinary tap water for this and it's clear as well. And that is fine. We can add some color in post-production. So let's talk about camera settings. The camera settings for the camera itself, well, I'm working in manual mode because I'm using flash and I'm working at the camera's sort of flash sync speed or thereabouts. In this case, one two hundredth of a second for the shutter speed. The ISO, I'm on 200 ISO, but it's the aperture. The aperture really matters because that gives me depth of field. I need a depth of field that's wide enough to get the whole of the fishbowl in plus a bit extra room because the, the splashes go all directions. Now on the Olympus, I've got a micro four thirds camera here. I get a bit more depth of field. So I'm going to use F11. But if I was using a full frame camera, I'd probably choose F16 or even smaller to maintain a good depth of field. Right, let's take a picture and see how this goes for exposure. The flash is currently set to 1 32nd of its full power. And that looks way too bright. So rather than 1 32nd power, I'm going to bring this down, well, probably two stops. That would be 164th, and right the way to the bottom, 128th. That looks really good. I've got that lovely arc around the fishbowl. I've got the round fishbowl itself, and that looks really nice with a reflection below. And with the camera set, I can get on with dropping things into the water. Now, normally I would use these. These are glass fake ice cubes. And I use these often because they're translucent, which means the light will pass through them and you'll see the shape and the outline, but you won't see a silhouette. What happens if I was to use something like this little guy? Um, no, he's not a real fish, as you can probably tell. He is made out of plastic. No animals were harmed at all during the making of this video. But he represents something that isn't translucent. It could be fruit or anything else that you're going to drop into water. If I had him here, then you would get a silhouette. So to see something that's not translucent, you need to add a second light. We'll come to that in a little bit. First, I'm going to get the main splash. So let's get this. Let's get my finger on the trigger. My little trick is to make sure that the water is all over the thing you're going to drop in. So as you raise it above, you can see the drips dropping straight in. And you know when you let go, that means your object should hit the water and not miss. Here we go. 
All I need to do is press the shutter at exactly the right time. The right time is not when these things hit the water. In fact, you need to press the shutter momentary after they hit the water, just so the splash can actually get up and rise and spread out. So it's always a little later than you think. Here we go. And when you get it absolutely right, you get some really great splashes. That wasn't one of them. Let me take a few more pictures and see if we can get a good splash. Oh yeah, there's a good one. So my second light is going to come in from above and just in front of the fishbowl. But before I actually take a picture with this flash on, let's just get my little fishy friend here and we'll, we'll pop him in and see how it looks without the front light. And of course he comes out as a silhouette exactly as I expected. So if I turn on the little speed light here, and this is another Adorama street light. This is their little speed light version and it's on the same radio system as the, the Street Light 360. Now it's on one eighth of its full power. I've no idea whether that's right or wrong. Let's take a picture and have a little look. Okay, no, that's clearly wrong, way too bright. What I don't want this second light to do is to contaminate the background too much. Otherwise, again, it'll make post-processing that much more difficult. So I reckon that's about two stops too bright. So if I go from one eighth to one sixteenth power, that's one stop, and then one sixteenth down to one thirty second, that's two stops different. Let's take the same shot, and that's fine. That maintains the background, but puts just a little bit of light onto the fish. Right, okay, so that's my basic setup, and you might be wondering, well, why didn't I just drop the fish in in the first place, save all that messing around with ice cubes? Well, here's what happens if you try and drop a fish in. You end up with a nice little splash, but also you end up with a fish that's all out of shape and often it'll drag air down with it as well and it can be very distorting so you can't really see what object you've dropped in. So instead, I'm gonna pop the fish in and then photograph it in situ. Now this little guy floats, so I've just gotta get this absolutely right. Here we go. And if I just drag my hand out very quickly, there you go. I get a nice little shot with the fish pointing down as if it just dived in. All I need to do now is to combine this shot with the splash picture and we can do that in Photoshop right now. I really like how time spent with the photography can save you tons of time in post-production. Now, I shot everything in RAW and I've done a bit of basic editing and tweaking to the pictures. The interesting bit is merging the two images together. Let's have a look. So this is the first shot, the big splash. This is the one I'm going to use, kind of looks quite good. And I'm gonna combine it with this picture of the fish that's upside down. And of course my hand, but my hand won't be in the final picture. So I've done a little bit of work here to make the, the fish try and look a little bit more fish-like and less plastic. Not sure it really makes much difference, but we get the idea. Let's just go to select and all, edit and copy. I'll jump back to the main image and edit and paste. Now, of course, when you paste, you automatically get a brand new layer. One of the things that you may or may not have noticed is that with the, the second shot of the fish, the camera position, the bowl, and the zoom were identical. Nothing changed from one shot to the other. That should mean that more or less the two Im images are in register. Let's see. And I can check that by just getting the opacity and lowering it down. And yep, the, the bowl doesn't seem to move hardly at all, at least only a tiny amount. That's fine. So it should be a nice easy job going to layer, layer mask, hide all, then if I go in a bit closer and I get a paintbrush with the opposite color to my layer mask. So at the moment my layer mask is black, if I get the opposite color white and get a nice big brush, I should be able to paint, yep here we go, and bring the fish back through quite nicely like that. We'll get rid of the ice cubes at the bottom like that, okay. Good. Now, of course, the bottom of the, the fish bowl there has no ice cubes in. That means I need to remove them from this one by, again, painting in the other base image. Now, that's great. If I've gone a little bit over, yes, I have a wee bit there. I can just swap to back black by pressing the X on the keyboard and just sort of painting these areas back in just to blend everything in together so we have a, a nice shot that looks 
pretty good. That looks great. Now, in the video right at the beginning, I said about how I'm going to change the, the color because I'm using ordinary uncolored tap water. And I want a slightly bluish feel to both the water and the background. And I'm going to do that back in Photoshop. So if you're absolutely happy, and I think I am with that, I can go to layer and flatten this down. And then I can go to filter, camera raw filter. And from here, I can just tweak the white balance just to give it that slightly bluish feel. That looks pretty good. I can pump up the, the vibrance a little bit and also add a bit of clarity in because that always helps. I do like a little bit of clarity, especially on this sort of shot. And there you go. There is my final image completed. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and you want to see more from myself and the other amazing presenters here on Adorama TV, you know what you've got to do. You've got to click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.